Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today's installation video is going to cover the install for the GPR V5 steering stabilizer or damper for the uh, Prilia Touareg 660. As you can see, it's already on the motorcycle, so the install is complete right here. Uh, very happy with the fit and finish. I'll get into more of those details as the video goes on. Um, I was able to get this uh, stabilizer unit at a small discount from a uh, uh, GPR in San Diego, California. I did tell them I was producing a installation and later on an impressions video on this uh, steering uh, stabilizer. So um, no uh, biases there, just uh, to be fair to them. They asked if I had any ins installation problems or anything specific with their product that I contact them first before I published it. Totally fair. Totally get that. So anyway, uh, as far as their parts and their installation pieces go, everything seems absolutely fantastic. Very quality hardware and um, the unit itself is very quality. Seems like it's gonna be very easy to service this unit. The problem that I ran into with this install has nothing to do with GPR and has entirely to do with the fact that the um, hardware was uh, secured to the, uh, from the Prilia factory, the hardware that I have to take off for the lower handlebar mounts was secured both with red Loctite and a nylock nut, which is a nearly impossible combination to uh, <laughs> to get to come undone. So uh, once I had the triple trees flipped forward, uh, we'll see that more in detail as the video goes on, but I had to, uh, the only option I was left with um, was to use heat to get this nut off. Cause what happened with the other one is that this entire piece wanted to, this stud wanted to come unspun from this lower handlebar mount. Let me zoom in a little bit. This entire um, stud came out of this lower handlebar mount um, to the point where I had to put two nuts on it. And then I had to apply the heat with a low, with a small propane torch while simultaneously protecting all of my really sensitive uh, components here, electronics, gas, sensitive cables, you name it. I'd use a heat blanket that's used for sweating copper pipes and walls and stuff like that by, by plumbers. But this, uh, this heat blanket would have, is the only thing that would have made it possible, uh, during this installation to get, uh, heat applied to this nylock nut. So when I applied that heat, uh, it literally just melted out the nylon and it melted out the, um, red lock tied out. It comes out kind of looking like a red wax. Um, so, and I was able to do that without uh, doing any damage to the uh, rubber bushings and sleeve that go through the upper triple tree or any of the uh, electronics around here. So um, obviously that's a very, very, um, you know, uncommon thing to have to do to just apply the heat on something like that. But in this case, uh, maybe you'll be luckier than me and this nut will immediately want to back off um of this stud and if it doesn't you might find yourself in the same situation because no law uh pb blaster or liquid wrench or any other type of fluid is going to release uh this combination in here if you got the same guy at the aprilia factory that loves using red loctite with nylock nuts so anyway um that was the main challenge that the whole install should have taken me under about an hour, even with all the fumbling with video. Uh, unfortunately, it took about an extra half hour or so to uh, mess with um, uh, providing heat onto the nut and getting everything nice and safe. So uh, also through this, uh, you're going to have a lot of parts, the handlebars, the upper triple trees, you're going to have a lot of things that will be coming partially off the bike and you're going to be working on them without fully detaching them. So it's a good idea to have a lot of uh, rags or big towels or blankets on hand while you're doing this just to protect your paint job and your sensitive uh, TFT display and things like that so we're not doing damage to them. So anyway, um, now it's installed. I'll be uh, providing some uh, follow-up impressions once I get a chance to get out and ride this and uh, see how it performs out on the road. I'll be either in doing a dedicated video or inserting that in with some other content for some other accessories that have installed uh, onto the motorcycle. But um, yeah, uh, besides changing out my, my hand grips, which I'm getting ready to do right now, um, I've got uh, no more projects on this motorcycle um, until I just start riding really hard through this, uh, this summer. So hope you folks enjoy the install video. Um, cheers. Okay, so in the mail, the GPR stabilizer is going to come. Um, and this package right here, everything's gonna be nice and shrink wrapped. It's gonna include some instructions. Um, 
from GPR, uh, a, both the, uh, just a front side of instructions, back side is just has to do with uh, warranty claims and return policies, et cetera, on the back side here. Uh, it's gonna come with the uh, V5 GPR stabilizer, which has a really fantastic uh, fit and finish to it. Um, very happy with the way that looks. Um, seems to be extremely high quality. Um, and one thing that I like probably the most just out of the box looking at this is just how tactile the adjustment is for this GPR stabilizer. Just very easy to turn this adjustment knob, even with a pair of gloves. So, and another thing here is on the adjustment dial, um, going from steering damping one to the max setting of eight, you can easily just turn it 10 degrees to get to it versus having to go all the way, say 350 degrees um, back to the other side to get to it. So it's something that's uh, easily adjustable going from max to min settings and uh, very easy with a pair of gloves. So be the uh, stabilizer, the steering collar, which is gonna, once we get everything removed, is gonna uh, provide a stationary place for the uh, stabilizer to mount to the steering head. Um, and then this stabilizer itself is going to mount to a new lower handlebar mount, which is going to um, just take the place of the lower handlebar mounts. Um, just at a quick glance, it doesn't appear to be uh, any taller than the stock lower handlebar mount. So I don't believe there's any rise here included, at least uh, not to the naked eye. Um, but this GPR stabilizer then is going to mount onto this lower piece. So the GPR has managed to, it uh, looks like, uh, get this damper uh, mounted under the stock handlebar height, which is probably very good for some folks that want to keep uh, that handlebar height intact. They have included some anti-seize lubricant, which I would highly, highly recommend in the process of this install. Um, I probably won't use this uh, Thread Magic. I'll probably use my normal Permatax uh, anti-seize lubricant, which I'm a big fan of, uh, but I do recommend using the uh, anti-seize lubricant um, in some form. And then also while I'm doing this install, although I won't include in this video uh, because it's a really convenient time, I'm already gonna be working on the motorcycle. Today I'm gonna be adding um, some Pro Grip, the uh, Pro Grip 785 foam grips. Um, this is something that's uh, recommended by a bunch of hard enduro riders. And for anybody that's ever used foam grips before, um, they're surprisingly uh, long lasting and grips being just so darn easy to get uh, swapped out. I'll be doing that uh, today as well um, after I'm done installing the steering damper. So uh, check these out, uh, Pro Grip. They're also from Italy, Pro Grip 785 foam grips. Um, they make two versions of this. Uh, the 785 is slightly more uh, narrow. They make one that's a little bit of a fatter grip, but just for vibration, this is uh, what the Dakar uh, racing guys use just for to keep the vibrations low through the bars. And uh, these were only $13.95 USD. So something to look into uh, if you're also looking to change out your grips and you find that changing out grips is particularly easy, maybe something for you as well. So for the uh, disassembly of this uh, bike, I've got pinch bolts. Those are going to be eight millimeter Allen heads and the top clamp here, that's gonna be eight millimeters as well. And then maybe something that most of you won't have uh, handy unless you have a wide toolbox like me is gonna be the 12 millimeter Allen head, which is actually gonna go into the steering head uh, nut in order to loosen that. So that might be something that uh, you need to go out and actually find is a 12 millimeter uh, Allen head. And in my case, I prefer to use sockets. So that way I can put my uh, Torque wrench back on it when I go back to reassemble the bike and make sure I get it back to factory spec. Now, the only thing that was in the instructions that I really saw was a difference over the um, uh, the factory recommendations for installing or re disassembling or reinstalling the top triple tree is that when they go back to tighten down this uh, steering head nut, um, they recommend that you torque it down to a lower uh, foot pound. I'll uh, revisit this uh, soon, but I believe it's like 30 foot pounds, back it off, and then bring it back up to the full factory spec of, uh, in this case, 73 foot pounds is what they have there in the instructions. So uh, it really just recommends doing it in two, two steps versus just cranking it down all the way on the first go to 78 foot pounds. I recommend um, going to uh, about half 
that amount and then uh, backing off the nut and then retightening it again, giving it a chance for everything to pull into place, back it off, and then uh, torque it to spec. All right, step one, remove the handlebar, then put the T-bone back onto the bar mounts. This will be helpful when removing the OEM handlebar risers. All right, here we go. All right, so I've taken off the handlebars. I reinstalled the uh, T-bone in here, and you may have noticed as I was taking this off, if you happen to see a little red mark here on my handlebars, that's where I went through and I marked uh, where the handlebars were in relation to that T-bone, so I would have some clue as to where my handlebars were before because I was pretty comfortable with their uh, previous position. So I marked just on the handlebars with the marker where that was. Also, just to keep these handlebars up and out of the way, I would recommend having... Um, you know, uh, some kind of towel. Um, you're going to be potentially pushing this up against uh, towards that TFT display. Uh, we really don't want to do damage to that, obviously. Or your windscreen with all the uh, handlebar, handlebar guards and everything <clears throat> hanging off of it. So uh, what I did was I just used a standard style um, clamp that you would see like from a um, hardware store. And I just used that from the top of the windscreen uh, down here to the bottom of the bar just to hang it up here out of the way. And that's going to give me really nice access to this and keep those handlebars nice and secure and um, out of my way. So not a bad idea to grab one of these for your install. All right, step two. Loosen the fork pinch bolts and remove the SSN, which is the steering stem nut. Slide the triple clamp off the forks and move it toward, excuse me, move it forward to expose the neck of the frame as shown in pick one. Here we go. Okay, so um, <clears throat> now to get these pinch bolts out, um, getting the top ones out pretty accessible, but you might need to maneuver the forks left and right to get to those lower pinch bolts and not get into that plastic there. Also, when you're uh, trying to loosen the steering stem nut, um, it if you're not in a motorcycle lift where you have the uh, front end locked in somehow, um, it might be best to find a way to keep that wheel stationary. All I had to do in my case was basically put my foot down here, and I've got long enough legs in order to do this, to put my foot down here on the floor, and then to push in the opposite direction so that my forks weren't swinging hard in this direction as I'm pushing against that steering stem nut. Because all of my cable guides and everything that are attached to the handlebars are up here and stationary, and if I pull too hard, it's going to yank everything down. So just a quick tip for you, maybe just use your foot or find another friend or some other way to keep that front wheel stationary when you're really pushing hard and torquing on that steering stem nut. All right, so uh, step three is here is to remove the OEM handlebar risers. And it says you'll reuse the uh, top T-bone and the cup washers underneath, but you will not be reusing the OEM bar risers, which is this lower section here that I currently have a wrench on. So not uh, particularly important here that I keep these looking in the best condition. You may have noticed that I keep adding on more and more towels basically to protect the bike because I'm getting into where uh, I'm having to torque uh, untorque these these nuts and they've they are majorly torqued down especially with all the rubber bushings in um, these are these have been an absolute bear to get uh, them to break loose so um, initially we had that top bone on there in order to um, <clears throat> keep this uh, nice give us a nice uh, grab handle basically to pull off the top triple clamp uh, but now I just want the ability to put on a wrench now if this top bone's on, that's fine, but I really don't want it taking the brood of the force here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a crescent wrench on this top, which you can see it has flat sides and that's what it's meant for is in order to put a wrench on there. And then have your ratchet with your 15 millimeter socket. I've got a short well uh, 15 millimeter socket here that um, I'm using in order to get underneath there and that way, instead of having to fight the triple clamp, which is still um, 
on the bike, but not quite attached here. Um, it, but it's still attached to all those wire bundles. So it's easier to get two wrenches on it like so, and to pull in opposite directions. And I have put penetrating fluid down into the tops of the threads to loosen this up. And it is still an absolute bear. So, I mean, borderline uh, seized on this factory installation of these uh, bar risers. So wish me luck. Okay, well, I ran into a pretty big issue here. Um, there is, these are the bolts that go all the way into the bottom of these stock risers. Now these had lots of thread lock on them, which is why they are so difficult to back off in the first place. But the problem is they're a flanged bolt that goes into the bottom of here. This nut is supposed to release. Now this is a nylock nut down here that's not letting go, um, which is really unfortunate. All right, guys, so just a pretty big jump forward here. Uh, we last left off, I was trying to remove the lower handlebar mounts, um, and there was a uh, nylock nut on the bottom of these. And man, um, that was really extreme trying to get that off of there. Uh, big mistake here uh, from the Aprilia factory. They used both red Loctite and a nylock nut. And um, I have to tell you, that is a built-in suspenders approach that uh, makes it nearly impossible to get these off. So uh, unfortunately what I had to do in my case was use a um, acetylene torch and I put a big giant uh, a heat blanket underneath it at the time when I was working at this. So this is definitely something where um, if you don't have experience doing this, you might be running into a little bit of problems, but I had to use a heat blanket and put some heat uh, onto that nylock nut um, in order to melt out the uh, inner nylon here on the nut to get that to release. That's how much it took to get this stud out of that upper triple tree. So thankfully it's done. Um, I've moved on to the next step, which is to put uh, GPR's lower bar mount on here. Um, the arch is going to go towards the ignition here, and then they just have some bolts. You're going to reuse the cap washers, just those uh, beveled washers um, on the bottom, and then it's going to be an eight millimeter, eight millimeter Allen head that's going to uh, torque these down to 30 foot pounds as per the instructions to get these locked in. Now, uh, additionally, I might say that because I had such a great issue doing this. This is something that should be torqued down. It shouldn't be, we shouldn't be using red Loctite here. Um, we should be using NAC's uh, lubricant and uh, some is included in the kit. I used my Permatex anti-seize, but uh, I made sure to put that on the threads of the bolts before I put them in and torque them down to spec. So thankfully uh, this should never happen again the next time. Um, should this ever need to come apart, this should come apart fairly easy and it won't require the use of uh, heat and uh, a lot of swear words in order to get those out. Okay, the next couple steps are gonna be to remove this rubber dust cover off of the uh, steering head as so. We're gonna keep this on the side because we're gonna put that back down. And then um, I actually have a, uh, if you see a little bit of a harness here, that's for my tank bag. I'm gonna make sure that I get that up and out of the way so I can install this and then later on, I shouldn't have any uh, major issues trying to get um, this piece uh, off of the motorcycle should I ever decide to take it off. So I've got one more step and uh, making sure that that doesn't get in my way. But the this steering mount is going to go on here. And then I'm going to have a pinch bolt. Then I'm going to torque down to eight foot pounds 
after I've got it exactly where I want it. All right. It's all the way down on the steering neck now, and I've got my little harness uh, laying over the top of it um, so that I can get, get it off fairly easy later. Um, and I've got a pinch bolt down here on the side, which they're instructing me to torque down to about eight foot pounds. Okay, my rubber dust cover is back on. Next step is going to be to put the triple clamp back on. So I'll try to carefully maneuver this back on top. If for any reason it's dragging, I'll check to make sure that I'm not dragging on something. It seems to be coming back in rather nicely. And if it gives me any trouble whatsoever, I'm going to plan on using a mallet. My steering stem nuts with a little bit of anti-seize on the threads. Thank you, thank you GPR for including anti-seize with this kit. And uh, which is gonna be very, very important to making sure that this it becomes repairable in the future. Um, not sure why there was such an excessive amount of uh, thread lock on here, but uh, making sure that we're keeping uh, in order with the instructions here, the steering stem nut absolutely has to be torqued down first before the pinch clamps. If you do it in the opposite order, that's big bad news. So make sure that you're torquing this down first, steering stem nuts, and then the pinch bolts um, out of order will um, uh, potentially leave your will deform the upper triple tree, or it could leave the steering stem loose uh, and then bearing failure and lots of really bad things could go if you go out of order. So make sure that this is tightened down first. Now, as I said uh, earlier in the video, uh, the thing that I really recommends is going to basically a half torque setting first on this if you look through their factory service manual and then backing it off uh, to where it's loose again and then torquing it down to the uh, factory spec of a 76 uh, foot, excuse me, correction, 73 foot pounds on this nut. So I'm going to do that right now. Next up, the pinch. Pinch bolts on the forks. 18 foot pounds on those. I'm going to get them most of the way there. Once again, this is that uh, six millimeter. All right, next step is to actually mount the uh, damper on here. So it's going to slide down. This piece right here is going to go down into this tab. And we're going to use the supplied bolts and torque those down to eight foot pounds. Okay, it's time to put the OEM handlebars back on. And this is the only part of the entire install we'll all actually recommend uh, adding a little bit of Loctite. Everywhere else I've been using NACs. In this particular one, I'm going to use just a minor amount of uh, blue Loctite on these to keep these in place. I'll get my handlebar centered up. And because I put my little red mark right there, um, I'm able to put the bars back right back where I had them. Um, exactly where they were set before. Uh, install is complete. Please remember here at the, uh, at the ends to come through. And if you're like me and you want everything to be perfect and just so, so this little arrow uh, under the V5 
just because I'm a little bit OCD, I wanted it to point exactly straight back. So what I did is I actually loosened up the mounts a little bit and then retorqued them down to the uh, eight foot pounds, which is a really difficult setting to get on most uh, torque wrenches. Um, I happen to have a torque wrench here that also does inch pounds. So just the conversion there, obviously, to inch pounds is eight times 12, so 96 inch pounds uh, to torque down these uh, five millimeter Allen head screws, both on the one that uh, uh, cinches down the collar to the uh, steering head stem and also the uh, five millimeter Allen head, which um, I'll say pinches the what I'm calling the tiller off of the bottom of the, the stabilizer. So um, 96 inch pounds or eight foot pounds on this. So uh, installs complete. Uh, very happy um, with the uh, fit and finish here and how it came back together. Uh, just minor thing was getting the uh, bike disassembled, obviously, but very happy with the uh, ability here and just the tactile uh, knob here, being able to go from min damping uh, up to level eight, which is max damping. And it's just a very quick and easy on the fly. This is the same amount of pressure here. There's eight and then there's one and then there's eight again. And then settings all the way in between. Uh, looks like probably about setting five, five and a half is where mine's going to be living. Um, that's a pretty good amount for me. So uh, very good uh, uh, amount all the way through the movement. It doesn't make it hard to come from, from full unlock, but it starts to really pull in the dampening as it comes back straight. And just coming from um, straight forward, it provides that quick damping just to steady out the front wheel. So um, seems like it's going to work great. Um, very happy to give you guys my impressions. Uh, stay tuned for that.